Welcome to Epworth United Methodist Church, where we follow the example of Christ by Good morning, Epworth. Good morning. Good morning, Epworth. Good morning. And greetings to all of you who are worshiping with us online. Thank you all for your faithful stewardship. For those of you who are here, you can give in the plate that is right outside the worship center. You can also give via the website, electronically through your bank or by mail. We do rely on your cons consistent giving to support the many ministries of the church, so thank you. For those of you who are watching online, we will be celebrating the service of Holy Communion later in the service. Find a cracker, a cookie, or a piece of bread along with a beverage so that you can celebrate right along with us. Epworth will be purchasing poinsettias from Oakland Nursery to decorate the worship center for Christmas. They're red or white poinsettias and they'll be available for $8 each. An order form has already been emailed to you this past week with all of the details, but just in case you forgot, order forms are also available outside on the table right outside the worship center. All um, poinsettia orders must be received with payment by Sunday, November 21st. And if you have any questions, please contact Diane Alshire. And how many do you think Pastor wants to have? Well. No. <laughs> 36. 36 and 48 would be great, but she's hoping for 24. <laughs> Will you please stand? <laughs> Will you please stand for the call to worship? Yes. Come, God provides abundantly for everyone. We will be some bread of life and God has removed our burial shroud and destroyed death forever. God takes away our distress and will wipe away our tears. Come to the feast. Celebrate God's love and mercy. We are glad and rejoice in God's salvation. You please remain standing as we sing for all the saints, the first three verses.
<clears throat> Today we celebrate those who have died and joined the great cloud of witnesses since last All Saints Day. They include members of Epworth, people who have supported or participated in our ministries, and a former pastor of our church. Lillian Evelyn Webb. Raymond Fatigue. Tom Brown. John Strawn. Tom Pritchard. Cora Green. Agnes Stebbleton. Ron Smalley. Reverend Dr. Don Grant. Herb Kreitz. Will you please join me in reciting the prayer? We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you please sing with us for all the saints.
goodness, we're getting a big group today. Hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. We got a big group. Woohoo. <laughs> okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's awesome. All right. So is everybody doing good today? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're glad you're here. Okay, so today we're going to tell a story from the Bible, and it comes from Mark 12, 41 to 44. And Nathan, could you do me a favor and read what it says right here? Everyone's gift is important. And let's see, Skylar, can you come up here and show me where Jesus is? Aha, uh -huh, right. And so if you look at the picture, what do you think Jesus is doing? Pardon me? Okay. So you think he's talking with his friends? Yeah. And what else do we see? Okay. And do you see a little box on there? Yep. Do you want to show me the box? You come up, show me the box. Show me what the box is. <gasps> what are they putting in the box? The tape. Well, let me help you out here. Can you tell me what is in my bag? What is that? Carter. Coins. Glad to say coins. 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 These are pennies. These are coins. So she's putting something in the box. Okay. Right. Thank you. You may have a seat. Good job. All right. So we're going to tell a story about this. So Jesus was sitting in the temple for standing, like there shows him standing there. And he's near the offering box, and he's watching people put in their gifts. He noticed that many rich people were giving a lot of money, a whole bunch of money. money. Yeah. But the poor widow, the poor widow here, she put in, let me show you how many here. I put a bunch in here to show you, but some money, but, okay. So she put in two, a couple of coins. So these coins are different than what she had, but anyway, this is what we have today. So these are pennies. So she put in a few pennies, okay? Jesus told the disciples to gather around him. And then he said, this poor widow has put in more money than all the others. Even though he saw lots of people put lots of more money in because they were rich, they had plenty of money, she didn't have anything. This is all she had, two coins. It's all she had to put away, but she wanted to give everything she had to Jesus. Right, she wanted to give it to Jesus. And so, what gift do you think that you can give to Jesus? Do you think you have a gift that you could give to Jesus? Yes. Yeah. What? A lot of money. A lot of money? <laughs> okay. Okay. You can, if you have a lot of money, you can do that, right? Right. Pardon me? Maybe a present. Okay. What kind of present would you like to give him? Okay. All right. Anybody else got an answer? Yes. What? A million money. <laughs> wow. That's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> I, I have 13 money. You do? 13. Okay. <laughs> I bought up 51 money, hit this two more, took away four dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll put this back in there. Okay. So you know what kind of gifts Jesus likes? Nice. He likes gifts that you give from, I'm going to see what, show you this first. Tell me what this is. What is this? A heart. A heart. So I brought that to show you. This is a heart. And a heart stands for what? Love. 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 That's right. So and how do you make the sign of love with your arms? Well, you can do it like that, right? And what else can you do? It? Like how about, me. like, that's a very good. And then you also can do this too for love. So you can do that. 
Well, you can do that. Very good. Okay, so he wants you, and then where's our heart at on your body? Where's your heart? Can you put your hand on your heart for me? Good. So God wants you to give from the heart. So God wants you to give. Remember what we said this stood for? Love. love. He wants you to love each other. He wants you to give that gift of love. And you can give that love, gift of love by doing what? Mm, loving. Loving. Loving, loving others, helping others, right? What, what, what would you do if somebody was sick? Um, right. Go give visit. Them medicine. Give them medicine. Go visit them. Bring Dad, them. Go to school. Not them take flowers. Them to flowers. Go. Right. Give them flowers. Not take them to school. No, not if you're sick. Yeah, go to school. Okay. Now, very, very good. You guys are doing really good. So, give things from the heart. Love each other. Help each other. Share. Raise your hand if you share it when you go to school. Who shares? All right. That's one of my favorite things to do. I love to share and give people gifts. So that's, that's one thing I like to do, to, too, is it makes me feel good to help others and share and to be there for them. Okay? Anybody else got a favorite thing they like to do? Yes, Skylar. Okay, can you put your mask down? I can't hear you from here. I said I, I like to put on the playground. Okay. I like to play robots. Okay, robots, okay. I like to play in pool. Okay, all right. I, I like to play in the big pool. Okay, all right. I like to go to women's camp. Okay, so we like to do all kinds of fun things and play. We have gifts that way. By God gives us all kind of gifts and talents and things. So that you like to play basketball or whatever at school and share and be friends and help each other, right? Okay. So you remember that song, "Love is Something." If you give it away, we're going to sing that. Just the first verse of that song, okay? I want to get my penny out here. Okay, you ready? Okay, it goes. Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. It's just like a magic penny, hold it tight and you won't have any. Lend it, spin it, you'll have so many, they'll roll all over the floor. Love is something if you give it away, Give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. So remember to give away your love and to share your love and help others. Very good. Would you like to stand and we'll say a prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this glorious day. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine and the beautiful fall trees. They are so gorgeous this time of year, especially when the sun hits them. And dear Lord, be with us today as we study your word and be with us as we learn new things. And help us to go out this week to show your love, to share with others, to help them, to help the needy, to help the poor, someone that is sick, and just help people know that they are loved and not alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so the kids are ready to give away all their money. <laughs> Let us be inspired by our children. <laughs> Just say it. Uh, I think that we should celebrate that our um, uh, beloved uh, musician, Holly, is so wonderful at um, uh, including um, our former musician, Bobby, as well as Linda, in um, sharing their gifts of music with us in their accompaniment and in special music. So let's celebrate Holly and um, Bobby and Linda um, in, the, in their shouting. <laughs> um, it takes a very special 
um, gifted uh, musician to um, uh, be generous and, and gracious in sharing her gifts and um, including other people to share their gifts uh, in, the, in the music ministry. And we'll be hearing from other musicians in the coming weeks, so look forward to that. Uh, also, today, uh, this week on um, the 11th is Veterans Day, so we do want to honor our veterans. So if you are a veteran, if you would rise so that we can recognize you as well. And let, and uh, Tom is in the back. Some, some of you were a little slow in, in uh, getting up. You may be seated. <laughs> Was that the Air Force guys? Yeah. So, and there, there are others in our congregation who are not here, and we celebrate all of you and thank you for your service to our uh, country. Share a couple of um, concerns, prayer concerns with you. I communicated with Lynn Moyer, uh, who is continuing to recover from uh, her uh, being hit by a car, and, and she continues to recover from that. She was able to be in the um, production uh, that she was rehearsing for at King Avenue when she was at King Avenue United Methodist Church when she was hit by the car. So today is her last production of that. She hopes to be able to come back to church next week. So we praise God that at least she was healthy enough to be able to do that, but it uh, is, is very sore. Um, and of course, um, the um, uh, primary concern we have is uh, um, Nigel Simpson. Uh, who continues to be at Specialty Care Select, um, or Specialty Select at, um, in the Short North, um, spoke with Elva. I tried to break in, but, or um, let me say, sweet talk my way in um, uh, the other day, but they'll only let one person in um, a day, uh, and, uh, and so, um, uh, I, I just couldn't sweet talk my way in, tried to pull the pastor line and all kinds of stuff, but didn't work. Anyway, um, I learned from Elva that he actually, uh, when they were in West Virginia, actually had to have surgery in Charleston and had a rod put in his neck. Was it C1 to C5? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, uh, um, because he had fallen and they wanted to protect the spine um, uh, from any further damage. So um, he's still in rehab, uh, and um, she shared with me they're spending three hours a day in rehab, which um, that's, that's a vigorous workout. Um, and so uh, we pray that the recovery continues to go well and that he perseveres. He's a pretty um, persistent person and determined person. Um, but of course, it makes for long days for Elva as well, driving down uh, and uh, working um, from that location. So we pray for you as well, Elva. Uh, and, um, and any um, jo other joys, concerns, we're so glad to have um, family with us uh, from, very, uh, from those that we were celebrating today uh, who have passed away that, um, this past year. We're so glad to have so many of you with us today and, and um, celebrate you and, and, uh, and, and your families as well. Let us pray together. God of creation, you have made us one in our dependence on you and one another. We praise you, O oh God, for the opportunity and responsibility to care for one another, to bless one another, to look for you in one another and to reflect you to one another. Thank you for the blessing of community who support us in times of celebration and in times of sadness. They are truly your loving arms in whom we find comfort and strength. God of peace and God of justice, we thank you for all who have made sacrifices for our country 
for all who have served in our armed forces as well as those who have served in the Peace Corps and who serve here in our nation to keep it strong and safe and moving toward a more just society. We pray for our military in war-torn areas, even this very day, as well as for their families back here who are anxious and worry about them every day. We lift up vets who have come home with injuries, many with brain injuries, who will, which will impact them for the rest of their lives. And we especially pray for veterans who live in a state of despair on the edge of suicide. We pray that you would instill in them a sense of hope, that they would know how precious they are. Wrap your arms around them. Shine your light upon them. Give them peace in their minds, in their hearts. Calm whatever creates that desperation and move in their lives that they can face the future with hope. God of love, may your peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds closer to you as well. We pray for those who are hurting physically. We pray for healing, for strength. Draw us near and show us how we can be vessels of your love and compassion in a hurting world. We pray for our community, for our neighbors, for our nation. Lord, have mercy. And for your world. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it already is in heaven. All this we pray in the precious and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
invite you to rise as you are able for the hearing of the gospel lesson from John chapter 11, beginning at 32. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, there is already a stench because he has been dead for days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus! Come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord God, the words of Scripture are powerful and meaningful and come to life in ever new ways. Open our hearts, open our minds, fill us with your Spirit that through my words, or in spite of them, we would hear your word to us today. Amen. It's been a really hard year for all of us. Actually, a couple of hard years. There are 750,000 people dead in the United States from COVID. Five million in the world. Effective vaccines, including now for children, show increasing signs of hope, but some of us know someone personally, even a loved one who has died from COVID. The weight of the pandemic has been a heavy one to carry for so many people, bringing with it many emotions. Many of us have lost loved ones who have died from other causes as well, which only adds to the burden. We find ourselves needing to express our emotions in similar ways that Mary and Martha did when their brother died 
and they had no problem doing so. When Jesus finally showed up after Lazarus had been dead four days, Mary, just like her, her sister Martha, had an if only, if only response. If only you had been here, Jesus, our brother would not have died. She believed he had the power to heal. She knew Jesus loved their family. So where was he when they needed him? We understand that. Where were you, Jesus? If only you had intervened. If only Jesus could have been there just a little sooner. If only she hadn't gotten cancer. If only Jesus had healed her. If only the medication or treatment would have worked. If only he would have gotten vaccinated. If only she hadn't been on that road that night. If only I could have gotten there just a little sooner. If only I could just have five more minutes with him. If only, Jesus, if only, why didn't you make those things possible, Jesus, we cry. I cry. I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to get through this, so just... <laughs> Go with me, cry with me. Jesus felt their pain and grief and even their if only, wishing Jesus had gotten there just a little sooner, believing that would have made all the difference. And he felt that deep within him. It says he was deeply disturbed in his spirit and deeply moved. His heart was breaking with his friends. But even deeper, the word implies that he was feeling it deep in his guts. He was feeling their pain deep in there, in his guts. And he wept with them. Jesus felt their sadness and grief as if it were his own. He even received their anger and their despair, much of it directed at him. As I have said at various memorial services, Tears in a time of loss are simply liquid love. This is what we see in Jesus. It is yet another way in which he expressed his love to his friends. Yet he knew he had come to reveal the glory of God, that death is not the end, that in the raising of Lazarus, we can get a glimpse of God's glory, of that day when God will wipe away every tear, when mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For Jesus is the resurrection and the life, both now and forever. 
But in the meantime, those words that Paul says, oh death, where is your sting? Mary and Martha say, it's here in my heart. And many of us can say amen to that. Death is a reality we must all face. We are all going to die. We are all immortal. But it can be so inconvenient We must let go before we are ready. While there are many times when there is a healing that comes with death, a release from pain and suffering that comes with death, that does not take away the emptiness felt by those who are left here. Grief is real and painful, and it ebbs and flows. It goes through stages. It can hit you out of nowhere. And grief has no statute of limitation. It can be two days, two weeks, two years, 20 years. It has no statute of limitation. But it changes over time. And it is mixed with hope, even joy, because we celebrate life. We celebrate the life of the one we love, yes, but even more, we celebrate that Jesus is life. He has come to give us new and eternal life on both sides of death. So Jesus goes to Lazarus' tomb with Mary and Martha, with the other mourners and disciples following. And he tells them to roll away the stone. And Martha, ever the pragmatic one, says, but it has been four days, and the stench would be too much. I mean, my brother smelled bad enough when he was alive. The stench is going to be too much. And yeah, death stinks. But death is not the end. And so they roll the stone away, and he calls Lazarus by name. And that stinky, wrapped up man comes shuffling out. He has been called out of the dark place where fear and hopelessness reside into the glorious light of Jesus' presence. He has been given another chance to live. And I wonder if we were Lazarus, if we would take advantage of the new life we had been given. What would we do with that? Here I am, back out of the grave. A little stinky, but here I am. What Lazarus did was invite Jesus to dinner. He spent more time with Jesus. Their home became a place of hospitality for Jesus, a place Jesus returned again and again between that day and Jesus' time in Jerusalem. He had heard Jesus call his name, and it gave him not just a new lease on life, but new life itself. A life 
He wanted to continue to live for and with the Lord of his life. So what would we do if we were in Lazarus's situation? Well, actually, we have been, because Jesus has given us new life through the cross and his empty tomb. We haven't been locked in a tomb, and I don't think any of us have actually died and then come back, but I do know that there are people who give testimony to that, so I don't want to diminish that. But Jesus is the resurrection and the life now. The gift of new and eternal life starts now. Anytime we have been lost or alone or hopeless and you have found hope or you have felt the presence of Jesus, maybe in another person showing up, you have experienced eternal life. And sometimes, maybe not literally, but spiritually, emotionally, we do feel locked up. We do feel bound by our pain, by the choices we've made. We feel locked up in our depression or our sadness or our grief by what we think is not possible. And then Jesus calls us by name and invites us to claim the peace and the joy of life focused on him. We have all been set free from our sin through the cross. We have experienced God's mercy, God's forgiveness, and a grace, an amazing grace that gives us abundant life. During times of grief or hardship or illness, when you have been able to see a way through, when you have found moments of joy in the midst of that, when your faith has carried you through, those are the moments when Jesus, the resurrection and the life, has met you there, surrounding you with his light and love and promising that his power and grace will fill you with life real life. I'm not just preaching this. I am telling you that this has been my experience. This has been what I have lived. In Jesus, death ends and everlasting life begins. The life of Jesus breaks into our present reality and transforms it. On both sides of the grave, there is life for us because Jesus has been sent to call our names. On both sides of the grave, Jesus is life for us. There is no death or grief or fear so dark or deep that the voice of Jesus can't reach into it, call us out, and give us life. So we come today to celebrate life, to celebrate the lives of our loved ones not only those who have died this past year, who are so special to us, but all who have gone before us. And we celebrate that in Jesus, 
the resurrection and the life who has conquered death itself. That there is new and abundant life for each one of us, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and sing as we gather at your table. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy God, power of power. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. 
on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this each time you eat it in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took the cup. And after giving thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples saying, take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this each time you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, I hear all of you working on these. <laughs> Remember, the plastic opens the bread and the foil opens the cup. Carefully. Remember that we come to this table not because we are worthy, but because we are welcome. Not because of anything we have done, but because of what Christ has done for us. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of him. And the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, shed for you. Take and drink and be thankful. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Make them be for us the body, may we be the body of Christ for the world, that they may know that you love them because we have loved them. We pray in the name of our precious Savior who died and rose again that we might have life, have it abundantly and forever. Amen. Let us stand together and sing for all the saints.
forth celebrating life, living to the fullness of life, trusting in the resurrection and the life, knowing that he is always with us through every day of our life. Amen. You may be seated.